so hello everyone in this video lecture we are going to discuss about uh, what do we mean by FEM and why we use it so this is a very introductory video and later in this uh, video series we are going to cover the complexity of the FEM so let's start with this video lecture series so the first thing is that if we want to define the FEM one of the simpler definition of FEM like uh, I hope that you, you are familiar with the term FEM so if we are going to define this term the simple definition of the FEM is like a finite element method is a mathematical technique which is based on mainly upon your numerical technique approaches and used to find an approximate solution for a complex problem if you want to define it in very simple terms what we can say is that finite element breaks a complex problem into simple problems and uses a mathematical glue to join the solutions now talking about the mathematical definition of the FEM so the mathematical definition of the FEM is something like this the FEM divides the domain of interest into a finite number of sub domains and use the variational concept to construct an approximation of the solution over the collection of domain so at this point maybe all these definitions look obsolete to you or maybe it's complicated for you if you are listening about the five FEM for the first time so let's try to understand this in order to absorb the concept let's take a very simple example so for a moment consider that we don't know the formula for computing the area of a circle and we only know that what is the area of a triangle so let's take a circle now as we know only area of the triangle so what we have to do is that we can partition this circle into different triangles so let's do that so at this point I have uh, partitioned this circle into four triangles so these are the four triangles now if uh, we uh, compute the area of this circle using this approximation that will be a very crude approximate approximation and uh, in FEM also like it depends upon the user like if you are satisfied with the approximation uh, you can go with the solution similarly in this case we can see that the approximation is very crude now if we want to further if you want to further uh, like want to get closer to the exact solution that, that will represent the area of the circle what we have to do is that we have to fill the left out regions so let's try to fill the left out regions by uh, triangles so if we fill that uh, this circle left out regions with that uh, more number of triangles what we are going to get is that we are going to get a better approximation of the exact solution so in this case if you can see that the, this now we are moving closer to the exact solution of this circle now you can also uh, again fill the left out regions with more number of triangles so we will move further towards the exact solution so this is the main core concept of the FEM like it divides your problem into a simpler into simpler uh, subdomains like in this case the triangles will be a subdomain for which the solution is known and then try to combine those solutions using the variational concept so we will discuss those variational concept in our later later part of this presentation not not this presentation in the video series so we can also say that mainly the FEM is based upon divide and rule policy so it divides and then find a solution that is more uh, that represents your exact solution of the system now let's move to the next part like why we use FEM and why it is so popular and why it is so important in today industrial day-to-day -day life so the reason is that usually the classic problems or this uh, closed solution are available for a very simple problems for this case in order to understand that let's take a very small a simple example like a cantilever is subjected to some type of bending load so there is a load that is applied at uh, end of this cantilever so for non mechanical users I will encourage you to just go through the concept that I am explaining uh, uh, but for mechanical users what you can say is that if I am going to ask you these questions like what is the maximum stress in the component where the maximum stress will occur, occur did, did the component fail due to loading or not you will be able to answer this pro uh, problem in a very easy manner like this will not require FEM at this point we can directly see 
that the bending moment formula is given by sigma is equal to m into y by i and this moment will be equal to p into the length of the cantilever that will be represent your maximum moment and y is measured from this your neutral axis so it will be equal to plus h by 2. So the maximum stress location will be around somewhere else tensile and compression. Now the second question is that the third question is did the component fail due to loading. So for that what we have to do is that first we have to predict the stresses. Now if uh, then we have to compare it with yield stress. If it is exceeding the value of the yield stress it means that it is in the plastic region. If the component is in plastic region we will further compare that if the stresses are greater than your ultimate limit or not. If it is greater than ultimate limit, we can say that the component has failed. Now for this case, it is very easy to say, it is very easy to predict these questions. But if we are going to add more complexity to the same problem, like suppose if uh, I have created some more cutouts in this uh, tapered beam, your classical approach will not be valid in this case. So if we want to solve this problem using our classic approach, what we have to do is that we have to make assumptions like uh, you have heard the term of the factor of safety. So using the factor of safety, we can design the component, but that results in your weight gain means uh, higher weight of the components, overestimating the solutions. So these things will come into picture when we are going with the classic approach. But with the help of FEM, we can solve these problems and uh, get closer to the exact solution that is possible for this component. So to understand that, let's first go through the introduction of the FEM, like how it works. So introduction to FEM. So first part is that in FEM, we have to, uh, if you go through any of the tool that is based upon finite element method. Today, there are many tools that, is, uh, that are available in the market like COMSOL, ANSYS, Abacus, Nastroen, SolidWorks. So these tools are available for, uh, are mainly based upon the FEM concept. So first, if you go through that, the first uh, step in all those softwares is that first we have to create the geometry that will actually represent the component that you want to solve. Second is that we have to define the material properties. So when we define the material properties, we are telling the software the behavior of the constitutive relationship like how like support for structural mechanics if we are going to include this uh, young modulus into this uh, if you want uh, to uh, take account uh, if we are specifying the young modulus poisons ratio and density of the component what it means is that we are giving a relationship between stress and strain of that component similarly i'm not talking about the plasticity because it, that will include isotropic and kinematic hardening Similarly, for heat transfer, we have to specify, for example, thermal conductivity of the problem or for fluid dynamics problem, it is it may be viscosity and other parameters that will be required. Third is that we have to define the set of boundary conditions. So these boundary conditions decide like how your solution is going to behave. Like uh, for previous example, the tapered section was fixed at one end. So we have to specify the fixed condition or uh, it's like the, you have constraining the translation degree of freedom in that direction. Similarly, for heat transfer problems, we have to specify the temperatures, flux, or for fluid problems, it will be velocity or pressure at the ends. After that, we have to mesh the structure. So mainly the mesh represents the geometry of your structure and finite element method mainly solves over the mesh, not over the geometry that you have included in the in any tool. Uh, you can refer to the first part in which we have discussed about this geometry of the circle and we want to compute the area of the circle. So for first, we, e even though we have the actual, actual geometry of the circle, but when we are trying to compute the area of the circle using the triangles, it mainly gives you solution depending upon the number of elements or number of triangles that you have included in your simulation. Third is solve. So usually most uh, common technique is newton raphson method. We will also discuss about this technique in our later video lecture series. Fourth part is visualization. It is also a very important <laughs> part of the FEM. 
like if you have the solution but if you want to predict like how the stresses are going to vary in the structure or like how the flow is uh, how the flow is changing when you are changing the boundary conditions or any other thing so for that we can use the visualization tool so uh, using that we can also predict where is the maximum location minimum location location of the uh, stresses and any other parameter so to understand this phenomena let's take a very small example first like for this case we can uh, uh, we have taken a step in this normal cantilever section which is bolted at two ends and there is a load that is applied at one end so the first thing is that when we are solving the fem problem in most of the cases what happens is that the problem is quite complex and uh, usually there is some type of approximation that is valid for those type of problem so yeah just by looking at this image what we can say is that if you are from a structural mechanics uh, background this is a plane stress problem so for plane stress problem we can uh, we will not be able to uh, it is not required to solve this problem in a 3d we will solve it as a 2d problem so for 2d problem let's simplify the geometry after simplifying the geometry we have to define the material properties so uh, define uh, let's do, uh, define the material properties as young for a structural mechanics problem it will be your young modulus and poisons ratio after that we have to mesh the structure now when we are messing the structure the one thing that is very important in this case is that in fem there is something called as grad uh, means the gradients so where uh, where you uh, have uh, the gradients are high what we have to do is that we have to use a refined mesh it's similar to the concept that we have used in order to calculate the area like in order to predict the gradients we have to use more number of element in that region after that we uh, the we have to solve this problem and after solving the problem we can see that we are applying the load in positive uh, uh, we can say that this is a positive x direction the deflection is also in the positive x direction so the fourth part represents the visualization like how the your component is going to behave when you are specifying a specific set of boundary condition and the loading condition so that's all for today's video if you like the video please subscribe the channel so that we can make uh, we can keep making good videos for you and this is a series may, which is mainly dedicated to finite element method and in next video next lecture we are going to cover how does the finite element works so this was a very basic introduction in next video we are going to cover like how this uh, like uh, we'll take the same example and internally how fem solves this problem using a 1d approach we will demonstrate that thing after that we will also go to 2d 3d approach of this uh, same problem or even though we will take the electromagnetics or heat transfer problem at that time <coughs> so thank you meet you in the next video